what about uh, just the average parent, the, the, the regular Joe who's not the, uh, the sexiest astrophysicist alive? How can they encourage their kids, uh, you know, short of watching science now and doing those types of things, just how can they encourage them to be involved? And so, I mean, when you talk to your kids, are you, you, you're obviously being very enthusiastic about it, and are they just, oh, dad, or, or do they recognize that, hey, maybe the old man knows what he's talking about? Yeah, they, I make sure that what I tell them that if they don't heed what I tell them, that there's a consequence that comes upon it. So, for example, so my son is playing with the candle flame, all right? So I'll just say, uh, Travis, the wax around the wick is extremely hot, and it could be painful if you touch it. Oh, okay, Dad, okay, Dad. Now, I, I think most parents would have just pulled the candle away from him. But I didn't, because the candle's not going to kill him, all right? But I just let him learn the lesson. So he keeps playing that, ow, it's hot, it's hot. And so, so the, the cause and effect of me giving the warning, but letting him still be curious in a, in a constrained way, like I said, I'm not yeah. going to let him maim himself right. or, <laughs> all right, not permanently maim himself, but there's the consequence of his own experimentation where the next time I say, if you do that, this other thing will happen, he's going to believe it. Another quick example, it's small, but it's real. We're at a restaurant. He's, how old is he? He's four or five. And he's got a glass of ice water. It's a glass with straight sides. And I said, um, Travis, why don't you put a finger underneath? Because it's slippery and now it won't slide out. So I don't need to. A minute later, he's embarrassed, there's ice, there's just water, but he's embarrassed to this day, to this day. He's holding paper cups, he's got his got finger, finger underneath. <laughs> <laughs> so it's physics, things get slippery when they're wet, there's, there's forces, and so the, the common question is how do you get kids interested in science? My great lament is that that's spoken by adults who themselves are not. And adults vote, adults control money and resources. Adults run society. So the problem is not how do you get kids interested in science. The problem is how do you get a, adults, how do you turn a scientifically illiterate electorate into a scientifically literate electorate so they can make intelligent decisions about their own future in this 21st century where science, engineering, and technology are fundamental to not only our health and well-being but our economic um, strength as well as our security. So kids, they're born scientists. That's not even the worry. It's the adults yeah, I'm worried about. Yeah, as you mentioned, they've got that built-in curiosity. Just like your friend. For everything. And, and it would just uh, apply naturally to the sciences. Now, I, I know whenever you applied to Cornell as an undergrad, you uh, received uh, a well, letter. as a high school. Uh, uh, to, be, to become, to, an, to become an, undergrad. an undergrad, yes. Uh -huh. You actually received a personal uh, letter from Carl Sagan yeah, yeah. recruiting you, asking you to, to uh, absolutely do come to Cornell. You ended up going to Harvard instead, but um, a couple of things here. How, how cool was it to get a personal letter from Carl Sagan? The coolest thing ever. And second of all, how ever. cool was it to get a personal letter from Carl Sagan? <laughs> <laughs> it was the coolest thing ever. Because as a kid, who are you ever getting mail from, you know? And then here's this letter from Carl Sagan. At the time, he was already famous. He would later become more famous because this is pre the Cosmos series where his international exposure uh, grew exponentially as a result of that. But even before then, he was on Johnny Carson, The Tonight Show, you know. He was, he was already a visible scientist, one of the most visible scientists of the day, professor of astronomy at Cornell. And so I get the letter inviting me to tour the campus and that he would give me the tour. So I go up there, he gives me the tour. Gives me the tour, shows me the lab. Reaches back, pulls out one of his books. I thought that was really cool. He didn't have to get up from his chair, you know. It was like in arm's reach. He, he, didn't, it's just, he closed his eyes, bat, bada, bing. And there's the book. So I, still, the I, I still have the book that he reached behind his chair to get. And, uh, you know, I was nobody to him. Who was I? I was just some high school kid. Now, my application to college was dripping with the universe. So, someone at the admissions office must have recognized this and sent it to him for either a second opinion or just to have him participate in the, in the recruitment exercise. But um, I'm sure it was not 
some duty of his required of him by the admissions office, I think it was deeply within him that he cared about a next generation of scientists. And it drove me to the bus station, I live in New York City, a bus ride from Ithaca, New York, uh, upstate New York, and uh, gave me his phone number, because it started to snow and maybe the bus wouldn't come through, gave me his phone number to, to call him in case the bus, and I'd spend the night. And so I, I was deeply moved by that, because I didn't know what was normal conduct for a scientist. I, my stereotype was a scientist in the lab, and they don't care about anybody else. But Carl Sagan cared about me, and I was nobody. And so to this day, my personal mission statement in my interactions with students is informed and enriched by that first encounter with Carl Sagan. So student calls, I, I hang up the phone with whoever else, no matter how important is their title. Yeah. Uh, the head of the museum, the, my boss, who's the provost of the institution, my, you know, at the American Museum of Natural History, it doesn't matter, I'm gonna field the inquiry by the student. And I will treat, forever treat students with the respect and dignity that Carl Sagan treated me. That is very cool, that is very cool. Mm -hmm.